editing. It will either make or break your video. I know, dramatic, right? But I had to get your attention somehow. There was a point, well, to be honest, that sometimes there still is, where I was shooting every single day. And when I was shooting every single day, I sometimes had to churn out up to five videos per week, which means not only did I have to edit to a good standard, I had to like retain the quality of my work, but I also had to edit fast really fast and that is exactly what today's video is today we are talking about how to edit faster that can be in whatever software you fancy or whatever software you use it can be premiere pro it can be final cut the best one by the way it can be davinci resolve it can be whatever editing softwares there are out there it can be one of those and the whole point of this video is to teach you how to edit faster because if you can edit faster it means that you get more time more time means you can either chill watch a movie, do whatever you want to do, or you can take on more jobs and potentially earn more money. Tip number one, organize your files. I am an organized person. Well, at least I like to think I'm an organized person. I'm the kind of person that will plan everything. If you don't have a plan, I panic. Please, everyone, what's the procedure? Stay so before you even start editing, the first thing you need to do is organize your files and make sure your files are exactly where you want them to be. Now to make my life a little bit easier, I actually made myself a template. I put that template onto my desktop and all I do when I have a new project is I drag that template onto my hard drive and then away I go. Now in this template, you will find folders for everything that I think I will need. So obviously I have been doing this now for about four to five years. I predominantly create YouTube videos. So I sort of know the structure of those videos. I know the folders I'm going to need. Your situation might be different. You might have a different niche. You might work with different clients. Therefore, you're going to need different folders. But whatever you do, just make folders for things that you would regularly use, whether it be footage, music, graphics, overlays, whatever it might be, create those folders and then create a template and whack it on your desktop. Now I know what you're thinking. What's in my template? Well, let's have a look. First up, we have audio. These are in no particular order, by the way. They're just how they look within the folder. But you can lay them out however you want, but audio, and that's exactly as it sounds. It is things like music, it is your sound effects. If you're maybe doing a promo video, it might potentially be a voiceover. Anything that is audio based is going to go in this folder. So it's, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory what that folder is. So the next folder is completed content. And so exactly what it says in the tin, it is all your completed content within a file. But within that file, there is also more files. This folder not only is gonna help you, but it's also gonna help your clients. So this is the exact folder I will upload to Dropbox for the client to then download. And in this folder, there's loads of other little mini folders. So there's things for the actual full video. So example, I make YouTube videos, okay? I make YouTube videos, ironically, I'm making a YouTube video right now. You're watching this on YouTube. But yeah, I make YouTube videos for other YouTubers, content creators, essentially. So within this folder, I will have a video for like the completed content, the main video the bulk of the content then I'll have one for Instagram content and then I'll have one for maybe pictures sometimes when they're there we'll just snap a few pictures so there'll be a few pictures in there to help promote the video and then finally there's a little folder for screen grabs now if you're not doing that already make sure you're pulling screen grabs from your video for your client it just looks like you're going above and beyond it takes you like five minutes and it's just that little bit of bonus content for your client okay so I'm going to rattle through these quite quickly but the next up we have Final Cut Library but obviously this is applicable to whatever whatever editing software you're using for Premiere Pro, whether it's DaVinci, whatever, After Effects, whatever sort of pieces of editing software you're using on a regular basis, the libraries will go within this folder. Next, probably the most important one is actually your footage, the stuff that you've filmed. Now for me, I normally just shoot one shot, like it's just all on one on this one camera and it's more like vloggy style. But if you're shooting other content, like a sit down content like this, for example, you might have another camera over there. So you might have an A camera and a B camera. So then within that folder, maybe have a camera A, a camera B and just have those folders. But for me, I just have all my footage. I dump it in this one folder. Then we have miscellaneous and this is literally that. It's just a random bit some bobs whether it's like you're pulling graphics from online or pngs whatever you're something you're going to put on the video and that's just this is just for all those random bits and bobs that don't really have a home and then finally we have the raw photos folder which is exactly like i said earlier sometimes we're on a shoot i'll just snap a few quick photos whether it's for a thumbnail or for socials whatever it may be and then once i've edited those obviously the completed photos will then go into completed content folder this one tip alone has saved me so much time when editing not only like when i'm actually editing the project but if i have any need to go back to the footage or back to the, the content, I know exactly where everything is.
Okay, tip number two, and that is building a well-structured timeline. So you've done your shoot, you've come back, you put it on your hard drive in your nice, neatly organized folders, your, your folder template, um, and now it's time to start editing. But we're gonna go back to the word and we're gonna do it in a nice, organized, structured way. When editing, I used to be the guy that used to do everything all at once. Okay, so I'd put a clip on the timeline, then I would color grade that clip, then maybe a couple more clips, color grade those clips, then I'd find some music quickly, put that underneath that, and sort of edit it, edit the, the footage to that, that music. Then I would then maybe add some graphics on top of it, and I would do all that little sequence. And then I would just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, all the way till the end of the video. And it took me so, so long. I'm telling you now, if you, if you still do that, Stop it. I'm gonna tell you now how to actually do it a better and more efficient way. And in order to do that, I'm gonna do like a little analogy thing for you so you can sort of visualize it. So you can't build a house unless it's got good foundations. I mean, you can, but the house will fall down and you don't want your house falling down. And where I'm going with that is the initial timeline of your video is the foundations of your video. To keep your timeline organized or do it bit by bit, or in this case, brick by brick. Yeah, that's good. Firstly, just get all your clips, okay? Build the whole timeline. Don't color grade them, don't get music, don't get graphics, don't do any of that. Just build the story of your video. So drag a clip, drag a clip, drag a clip, drag a clip, blah, blah, that's a mouthful. And once that's all done, then you have the foundations of your video. You have your timeline. Okay, now your timeline is done. Now you can start adding music. So add a bit of music here, a bit of music there, a bit of music there. And there you go, you've got your foundations of video. Now you've got your music done. Next, you can color grade the video. You don't need the audio at this point. So you can play some music, you can listen to a podcast, and you can just scrub through the video and color grade the entire video. And then finally, you can rewatch the whole video and just sort of like give it a bit of scrub through, make sure there aren't any mistakes, making any additional cuts that you might need to make. And whilst doing this, you can just add the graphics that you need, like a subscribe button or a, a click here a button or whatever graphics you need to add. You can do that whilst just doing your final scrub through of the whole video. And then et voila, your video is done. Now, wasn't that nice? That was a way more organized and stress-free way to do your video. Having a well-structured and organized timeline is gonna save you a lot of time. And probably, if you were doing it the previous way, a lot of stress. Tip three is remove distractions. Now this seems like an obvious one, but for so long I was guilty of this. Let me paint a picture for you and let me see if you can relate to this. You sit down, open up your editing software, you're about to sink your teeth into edit, like cool. I'm gonna do this for a good couple of hours now, really sink my teeth into it. Then you get a message from a client asking you if you can just make a few amendments to a video quickly. So you're like, oh, okay, I'll do that later, but let me just reply to this message quickly. So you reply to that message. The message is replied to, your editing software is open, so you, you type in the title what your project's gonna be, and then you get an email from a client, a new client, a potential client, and they're asking about your prices, they've got a project in mind, so you're like, oh, hang on a minute, let me just reply to this email quickly. So emails reply to, so you drag your first clip onto the timeline, and then you get a message from another client who you're shooting with next week, and they just need to change the time of the shoot. They got something come up, so you're like, okay, cool, I'll just do that quickly because the shoot is next week, I'll just reply to that quickly. Before you know it, half an hour has gone by and you haven't done any editing, you replied to a bunch of clients, but you haven't done anything that you intended on doing. I could go on and on, but it's such an easy fix. This thing here, this phone, just put it in a different room. You don't need it in the room with you. Even if you have it in the room with you, but say you have it behind you, you're gonna hear the vibration, you're gonna hear a ding. So just have it in a different room. You don't need it for at least two hours, three hours. When you have a break, you can go check your messages, reply to messages, then get back to editing. Not only that, but obviously a lot of people nowadays have like email notifications and WhatsApp notifications on their desktop. Do not have those turned on. I don't have them on my computer whatsoever because it's annoying. The noise for one is really annoying, getting this ding noise all the time but also it's distracting. So I do not have anything on my desktop. You will be surprised how efficient you will be with your editing, how quick you will be with your editing when you just remove all of those distractions, which are predominantly coming from social media and your phone and just notifications pinging up all the time. It's by no means practical, but I get some of my best work done at like four, five o'clock in the morning. I'm an early bird, by the way, but at like four or five o'clock in the morning, I can get some of my best work done. I don't do it often because quite often I'll go to the gym, we'll get up at five o'clock and we'll go to the gym for six. But 
A prime example is the other day, got up at five o'clock, ready to go to the gym. And I was like, oh, do you know what? My body's feeling really fatigued today. I'm not gonna go to the gym. So I just cracked on some, with some work. I made a coffee, I sat down. And by like eight o'clock, I'd done like three hours of like intense work. No one was awake, so no one's messaging. So there's no distractions. And I just powered through all my work. And I actually got an edit done by like 8 a.m. in the morning, which was mad. So yeah, that's probably the most simple one and the easiest one to apply is just remove any distractions, okay? Have a laser-focused work blocks. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't wanna bore you with loads of tips, some of which like are like kind of useful, but not useful. I'd rather give you like three really good ones that you can go on away and apply right now. Now, if you have any tips yourself, then please put them down in the comment section below. I'd love to see them, but I'm sure everyone watching this video would also like to see them. If you enjoyed that video or if you found it helpful, then please drop it a like. It really does help. If you're new to the channel and you fancy it, give it a cheeky subscribe. I shall see you lovely lot in the next video.